the power of segmentation in control net hello my friends how are you doing today i have something really awesome for you this reduces accuracy but because of it it gives you more control and freedom sounds counterintuitive let me show you what that means so first of all let's have a look inside of automatic 1111 where do you find that you have to scroll down here you see here control net version 1.1 check out my video on how to install that and get everything set up now below that you have here your preprocessor and there is actually three different methods of segmentation they are a little bit different i would usually say use the first one here i will show you the difference in a second then on the model side you want to select the control net version 1.1 seg for segmentation of course and then up here you have allow preview you make a check mark here and when you click on this little explosion here this is creating a preview for you now this can be useful for two reasons first of all it gives you an idea of how the segmentation has worked if it was successful or not also the kind of colors you get in here and you can also of course copy this image right click copy or you can also save that image and then edit this image image further in an image editing software like GIMP, Affinity Photo or any kind of other software you want to use. Of course to use control and you also want to enable this over here. So at this point let's talk about these different modes here. You can see we have three different versions. We have 0820 20K. Here's an example on how that looks and you can see that the different segments are separated by a white line. Then we have OF Coco. This one gives you a different color scheme and then we have UFATE 20K, which is the same as OFATE 20K, but without the separating white line in there. For most purposes, I would suggest you use the first one, OFATE 20K. Now, the really cool thing here is that these colors are actually defining the content of the image because this is an image recognition process. So here is a list that I will also link below the video where you can see the colors and also what they are defined as. So for example, here you can see that this kind of teal green gives you an armchair or a seat. And this bright yellow here is a sidewalk or a pavement. The good thing here is that you can address this in your prompt and it will react to that. And this also differentiates it between a depth map and a segmentation map because with a depth map as you can see here you get a lot of details about the room but at the same time the prompt doesn't know what is what in the image and so when I use the exact same prompt you can see here from the result that it actually turned the painting into a window now here on the other hand you have an example where I tell in the prompt that I want to have a landscape picture in my frame and it actually does that now here is a second example where I actually put this map into an image editing software in this case affinity photo I painted out the rectangle on the right side and added a second painting on the wall and you can see from my prompt that now I have two paintings with a landscape in the image and because these shapes are so basic it makes it really easy for you to define the composition or even paint what you want to have and then import this as a map. Now, of course, at that point, if you want to import that as a map, what you would do here is to remove this image. Then here in control net, you click and you load the map that you have created. But because this is already a map, you will set the preprocessor to none. So this is not processed a second time. Now, before I show you more examples, let's also talk here about the prompt. Basically, you write the prompt as normal. For example, here I say I want to have have a blue chair I want to have a brass lamp and I want to have a painting of a landscape actually is understood by the segmentation map and then created as that result in my image so the way to apply this in a prompt is actually very easy or well, you can also see in this example if I have a blue chair I often also get a blue wall behind that 
Now let's talk about why is it a benefit that this has less information in it. So here I have another example of a house with a death map and then with the segmentation map. Now what you can see is with the death map, there's a lot of information in there because the architecture, especially the balcony structure in front of the house is pretty complex. So actually that is too much information. And when we actually look at the result, you can see that the AI can't really help handle that kind of information. Now when we look at our segmentation map, we are getting a house in there, but because the inside of that area is not defined, it's just flat, it doesn't have any information, it can create a house that looks very nice and at the same time it doesn't have any problems with the complexity in there. Here we have another example of a woman leaning against a wall. And because I don't have too much information in the segmentation, I can change the clothing of the person very easily. While on the other hand, if I would use a depth map or I would use a canny map, there would be too much information and it would stick too close to the clothing that the person is actually wearing in the image. And that can hold me back in my creative creation process. So as you can see, this method has a ton of potential. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and please share your results in my Discord group and also in my Facebook group. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.